That's right. That's two more than yours. <laughs> and it really don't matter. You can't eat the horns. That's right. You can't eat them. Amen. When you're eating venison, you don't look down and think, I wonder if this thing had horns. You don't do that. Amen. You thank God for venison, potatoes, and gravy. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless the deer hunters in here. Remember, if you go hunting, and if you have the opportunity to slay a deer, the back strap is the tithe that comes back to the storehouse. <laughs> Amen. And we'll be receiving that. We've got a freezer in the back. We've got a freezer in both places. So just want to give you a heads up on all that. All right. Amen. Well, I'll share it with Joseph and David and the rest of them. Amen. So anybody needs it now, you bring me sausage, that's just an offering. Amen. That, that, that back strap is the tithe. That's the best part of the, of the deer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Got your Bibles? We're going to be in Matthew chapter 14. Before we get there, uh, Kim, I want to read out of the book of John. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Now, that's not on the overhead, so don't panic. It's some afterthoughts I had after I did the message. I started changing some things up. Pastor Mike and I, man, I sure enjoyed Pastor Mike Van Britson, who was here with us. He's so different than I am, and I think that's the beauty of having him in, uh, the way he responds and preaches. And, I, you know, I saw his notes and stuff, and I, I so appreciate him. We talk every I talked to him this morning. And you, there's such a difference in us. Tonight, he's going to a concert. Now, if you tell me that one of my friends is going to a concert, Terry, I'd get excited. I'd think it was, you know, Skinner or, or uh, you know, one of the bad boys out of Detroit or something. He's going to an opera. An opera. Oh, it's wonderful. You can't understand a the thing they say. And then he asked me, do you want me to call you when I get back from it to let you know how it was? I said, Pastor Mike, you're going to fall asleep in that thing. I promise you. Amen. But we're so different. No, he loves that kind of stuff. To me, I can't understand a cotton picking word they're saying. Amen. It's just, it's above my pay grade. Let yeah. I me mean, know what I'm saying. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. 1 John 1 1. I'm sorry, John chapter 1, verse 1 in the Gospels. He was with God in the beginning. What was with God? The Word. Through Him, who's Him? The Word. All things were made. Without Him, the Word, nothing was made that was made. One of the things that we have got to change and have a paradigm shift in is this book. That this book is my fact checker. Yep. Yep. This book has promises in it for me and unbelievers. This book changed my life. So when I read this book, I'm realizing I'm reading God's Word, and the Word is God. Can you wrap your head around that? Come on. Amen. So in life, you're constantly bombarded with circumstances, uh, situations, and you've got to decide that is it the Word or is it the wind? Come on. And can I handle which one? When you stand on the Word, and you hear people say that. They stand. It doesn't mean they literally stand on the Bible. They stand on the Word. Like I have for years, Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household will be saved. I stand on the Word. In other words, no matter what I saw within my family, and I saw a lot of stuff. I saw times that I, I went home to Alabama, and my brother come walking through the door, toting his snakeskin boots. And laugh. He's one year younger than me. He's a, he's a, a long-haired hippie. Amen. Tatted up, top to bottom. He come in the house. I looked at him and said, Jimmy, what are you doing toting your boots? He said, well, I got in a little tussle down at the bar. And he said, the last thing I told the guy that I ain't fighting you with my new boots on. I'll be back in a few minutes. And he went home and changed his boots and went back and got in a fight and beat the guy up. This is the kind of circumstances that I've been dealing with my whole life. So I would watch, I watched my daddy get mad at times. I seen my mama struggle with life. I saw my sister get sick. And no matter what happened, I had to keep standing on the word. Man. That the circumstances said one thing, but God's word said another. Come on. You got that, Saint? So you got to stand on the word. Why are you on this earth? You stand on the word. Are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Matthew 14. How many ways can you preach one passage, Joseph? It's a good question. 
a month or two ago, I preached, uh, Joseph preached out of Acts 16. I came back the next Sunday not knowing he preached out of Acts 16, preached a whole different message out of Acts 16. It's according to who's it's, it's different messengers, but it's the same message. Right. Amen. In this passage of Matthew 14, Jesus has just finished. Excuse me. Getting a little warm up here. And yep. waiting for it to cool down just to wear that jacket. <laughs> Amen. Jesus has just fed 5,000 men plus women and children with a little boy's sack lunch. Amen. Probably had his little Aladdin thermos in there and everything. <laughs> Amen. Fed them all. After that, he, he removed the disciples from himself. He put them in a boat, and then he went up on the mountain to pray. We read this over and over, that it was like the energy. It's like plugging in your cell phone. When Jesus prayed, it charged him up. Yeah. It helped him hear what the Father was saying. It gave him the purpose to be here. And then the scripture says in verse 22, immediately Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go ahead, on ahead of him onto the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. No distractions. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch, about 3 a.m. of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. It cried out in fear. And those who have been with me a long time, you know that I've used this passage for a lot of stuff. But the, the, the crying out has to do with the fact that any time a seasoned sailor saw an apparition on the water, it meant impending doom or death was next. So there was fear in the hearts of these sailors. They all Sailors have superstitions. That's right. You know, they'll have horseshoes. Uh, they'll have a nail. They'll have something on that boat that you got to touch. They'll say no bananas on the boat. You ever heard that one? No women on the boat. Well, you just got to go back a few years. That's before y'all got liberated. Uh huh. Amen. So, so this, these were things that sailors they were scared. They had superstitions about. So they see the ghost walking on the water, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, "Take courage, and as I don't be afraid." Lord, if it's you, Peter, Peter's talking now, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Love those three words. You know, it's the shortest prayer in the Bible. It was immediately, look at the next verse, immediately Jesus reached out his hand. He didn't wait on him to sink all the way down. He picked him up, called him, and said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, I'm going to tell you why he doubted. He doubted because he saw the wind. When you see the wind and you don't believe the word, you're going to sink. Come on. Amen. He saw the wind. Watch out for the wind. When you see wind, that's heavy. Amen. We got caught in a rainstorm out, out hunting in, in Menard. And I'm going to tell you something. Cold. Cold. We went from 80 to about 55 in a cold wind. And you could see the wind, but you only see it because the rain was moving it. Amen. Or it was moving in the rain. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Hmm, imagine that. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The wind or the word? Father, I thank you for your word. God, I stand on it. I believe you. I stand with people that are believing. God, I thank you that belief excites you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Let me say that again. Belief excites God. He gets excited when you decide to believe him. It's like, and, and, and from the beginning of time, man has tried to come up with ways to be saved. Amen. We all, we, we're doing good works. Uh, we sacrifice our bodies. We cut us. We beat our back. Amen. Uh, all kind of ways man has tried to come up with ways. We, we, we talk to, uh, to mediators, to priests, to try to get to God. All these things. And God said, listen, I got one thing that's going to help. One word. Believe. Come on. Amen. God made it so simple. We're all believe. Amen. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, believe and be saved. Hallelujah. And that's an amazing thought. 
Amen. If God come up with this and he said, no matter what man does, that's religion. But out of relationship, you believe. And believing excites him. And when they believed him at that moment, got back in that boat, the, the winds just died down. Amen. It just calmed down. We often encourage people with, with certain phrases in life. We tell them, uh, uh, keep pressing on. I say it all the time. I'm pulling for you. Amen. Keep looking up. Hallelujah. But as Peter's walking on the water, the scripture doesn't tell us whether Jesus said anything to him. Amen. We don't read that. Uh, but if he did, I imagine it was somewhere along the lines, hey, Peter, whatever you do, stick with the, we stick with the word. Don't look at the wind. Amen. Because the wind always going to get you in trouble. At any rate, however long it lasted, several things happened. First, the focus of his attention shifted from Jesus to the storm. We read it over and over. As soon as he quit looking at Jesus, his focus was shifted. Amen. When that happened, he began to sink. On his way down, he prayed. How many believe that on your way down, you ought to pray? I will tell you this. On your way up, you need to pray. And if you've been praying on your way up, you deserve a right to pray on your way down. But I would never take mercy away from somebody who's not been serving God and is on their way down. If you're on your way down, you need to pray. Amen. You need to call out, Lord, save me. This shift in attention gave rise to a new set of thoughts and feelings that focused on panic and inadequacy. While he was looking at Jesus, he was adequate. While he was looking at Jesus, he had no fear. But as soon as he saw the wind, and let me tell you again who Jesus is. Hey, come on. The Word. Amen. And as long as he was focused on the Word, everything was good. But as soon as he took his focus off, he started going down. Two things I want to mention here, two laws here. First, the law of cognition. Cognition tells us this. You are what you read. Your thought life influences every aspect of one's being. What does the word say about you? As a man believes in his heart, so is he. Amen. So this law goes into effect in every one of our lives. It's what you've been reading. It's what you've been consuming on. Amen. It moves inside of you. When I read what the scripture says, I'm an overcomer. I'm strong. I'm healed. He covers me with his wings. Amen. I'm standing on the word. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to just keep believing that. Then the law of exposure. The law of exposure says your mind will think most about what it is exposed to. Now, all you Astro fans, amen. Keep believing God with the preacher, amen? Because I'm happy about our boys out there. But let's do it again. Your mind will think most about what it is exposed to. Therefore, whether it be the wind or the word, to stand on the word, amen. And every one of us battle this. It's a fight inside your mind, amen, to stay standing on the word and believe in God for the best. And the great thing about being a believer in Christ is that no matter what happens, we win. Amen. When we leave this world, we win. No matter what happens, we're going to win this thing. So it's a great thing to know that, you know, if I, I'm, I'm going to win this. But in, while I am here, I have to stand on the word of God. So this, in turn, disrupted his ability to continue walking in Jesus' power. He began to sink, and he cried out in prayer. Amen. He forgot the number one rule. Well, you know what the number one rule is? I can tell you this straight up. I, I'm, I'm a vertigo kind of dude. When I say vertigo kind of dude, what am I telling you? That when I get in a high place, and if I look down, have you ever heard somebody tell you, don't look down? And what do you do? It's like somebody saying, wet paint. Yeah, come on. You got to touch it to prove it's wet. Amen. If somebody else don't look down. And you know, David and I work on the tower. We're always up there 40 foot in the air in the, air in the summer. We're helping kids go off on the zip line. And one of the, it's the number one thing we tell them, don't look down. And doggone it. <laughs> and as soon as you do, it's like down there, somewhere between here and 40 foot down, fear is there. And it just kind of whoops up in that line. They go, ha! And, it gets, and I got to grab them by the face and make them look straight out. Look at me. And I'll stand between them and whatever they're afraid of. Because I'm out here on a little two foot platform. They up on the big platform. And I'll make them look at me. And then I got them out on that little two foot, and I stand right there with them. And I said, look at me. Don't you look away. And I look over at David and say, give me a green light. That's all I need. Look at me. Don't you look away. And as soon, and they calm down, their heart rate slows down. And as soon as they calm down and I get a green light, I get out the way and send them flying. Ah! <laughs> and inevitably, as soon as we unhook them, they want to run back up and get back on that tower. Amen. Because all of a sudden, they've overcome that which they were afraid of. Amen. But then you got to keep, you can't be looking down. Because looking down, they'll mess you up. So let me tell you something. Hope got Pete out of the boat. What got me up this morning was hope. I have hope for a good day. 
Amen. Well, well I'm going to give today because I have hope that the seed that I sow is a good thing. Amen. I have hope. Amen. Everything I, I worship today because I have hope that he hears me and he knows that I love him through all my failures, successes, everything that's gone on in my life. God, I have this hope that you're hearing me in my worship. See, I think sometimes we don't worship because we don't think God pays attention. We don't give because we don't think God pays attention. We don't even want to get up in the morning because we don't think the day can be good. If you have hope in the word, and believe God that he put you here for a reason, you got a reason to get up. Come on. Amen. If you Come lose on. hope, you ain't getting out of the boat. I'm staying right here in this boat because this boat is more secure than being. Listen, I'd rather walk on the water with Jesus than sit in the boat with a bunch of book, 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 book. Come on. Scaredy cats. Can I get an amen? amen? So I think Peter got out of the boat just out of, uh, <laughs> out of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Survival. <laughs> Sometimes you can live with enough negative people that you just won't get out of the boat. Amen. Amen. Out of the house. I ain't doing Thanksgiving. I'm thank God. Thank God Christmas this year. Amen. It's going to be so different because they said we're not going to get all them toys and, and, and stuff and electronics because it's all stuck out there in the, in the water. We may have to actually focus on Jesus at Christmas. Amen. Mm -hmm. I got a good idea. Why don't we just trade our stuff? Right. Amen. Dave, you might have a gun I like, and I might have a gun you like. Maybe we ought to swap. Amen. For Christmas. Amen. Well, maybe we ought to get together and do a little swap. I have a little church swap. I like your watch. You like my watch. Let's swap watches. Amen. I like your earrings. I don't wear earrings. Find a woman that has earrings. I ain't wearing your earrings. Amen. Find somebody to swap with them. Amen. Right, Carly? Amen. That's so important. I might have a God idea right now. You know, I like your house. You like my house. Let's swap houses. <laughs> Joseph said, I like that idea, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget both of you right now. Amen. That ain't happening. <laughs> Amen. Hope got Pete out of the boat. Trust held him up. Fear sunk him. Let me say it again. Hope got him out of the boat. Trust held him up. But fear sank him. Amen. Sunk him, sank him, however you want to say it. And everything hinged on whether he was focused, amen, on the wind or the word. Amen. It all had to do with that. Let me talk to you about hope real quick because I love the word. This condition of the mind that is essential for us to live the kind of lives we're longing for. Hope that brings trust and confidence. It is the reason why some give up and others refuse to quit. But when it is lost, like Peter, we sink. Amen. And thank God that hope can be recovered as fast as you found it. Because yes, right. quickly he got back up and walked. Don't forget this. He walked with Jesus. Jesus did not carry him back to the boat. He didn't pick him up and say, all right, Pete, here we go. Back to the boat. He didn't pick him up and take him back to the boat. He walked with Jesus back to the boat. He focused on the word back to the boat. Amen. Hope is the fuel that the human heart runs on. Death of hope paralyzes the spirit. Hope is why humans keep bringing children into a fallen world. This world's messed up and babies are still being born. Why? Because we have hope. Yeah. We have hope somehow it's going to get better. Hope, it, hope is why there are hospitals and universities and therapists and consultants. Hope is why the Astros keep going, heading into the World Series. Can I get a come on, Jesus? Amen. Amen. No parent would agonize over a child without the hope that the child might live a better, nobler, happier life than they did. What brings a singer to sing? A preacher to preach. A praiser to praise. It's hope. It's why we do it. Amen. Every character God uses in the, in the word of God is a story of hope. Every one of them. Hope is what made Abraham leave his home. Amen. And hunt for a promise. And hope is why Noah built a, a vessel of hope. Hope is what made Moses willing to take on Pharaoh. David and Goliath. Amen. That was hope. You know, I'll tell you something else it was. When David walked out and looked at Goliath, they were screaming at David. David! Don't go! He, 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 he's, he's, he's too big to hit. And David said, no, he's too big to miss. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to go on after him. Amen. Hope keeps us afloat. We can survive the loss of an extraordinary number of things. But not one of us can survive without hope. Amen. Hope is found in the word. With the word. And standing on the word. Amen. Psalm chapter 3. One of my favorite psalms. David has trained up several kids, raised them. Let me just say he raised them. How many of us the difference of raising kids and training kids? Yeah. They raised them up. There was the oldest, Absalom. 
His daughter Tamar, his Ammon. Amen. I had several kids. But Absalom, as he got older, he was the one handsome with long hair. <laughs> I, I always have people that join our staff read a book called The Tale of Three Kings. Amen. The book, The Tale of Three Kings, is just a little bitty book. But it's a story of King Saul, who was extremely jealous of the kingdom. The story of David, who had a heart after God and a worshiper, and, and he just trusted God. I mean, if you want this, take it. I'm just going to trust God. And then the third one was Absalom. He was an insurrectionist. He was a, uh, he, he felt like what David had should have been his. He went after the kingdom. He got with people and said, you know what? The king ain't listening to you. The king ain't hearing you. Amen. And he, and he turned people against, the, uh, against David, his father, and he got a crew coming after him. And when that happened, David literally left the palace, and he went out to hide. Amen. And he wrote. Thank God he wrote. Yeah. Amen. That he wrote down his thoughts. And in Psalm chapter 3, he wrote, Lord, how many are my foes? He's talking about his son. How many are my foes? How many rise up against me? You know, by complaining of the king and saying that, that if he were made the judge of the land, every man would have justice done for him. If you vote for me, everything's going to be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many are saying to me, verse 2, God will not deliver him. Many are saying, I'm hearing rumors that I can't be delivered. David is entirely forsaken. He has no power defending himself and no hope of escaping from us now. And all the indications are that God is not going to interfere and God's going to allow us to kill David now. This is Absalom thinking. Amen. So David's eyes have to shift from the wind to the word. And he does. He says, but you, Lord, you are a shield around me. The, the, the Jewish shield had a, it was more made, it wasn't made out of metal. It was made out of uh, elastic leather. Amen. They stretched it and they put it around uh, uh, around a, uh, a border. And you could slide your hand in it and you could sling it and hit somebody with it. He said, God, I'm going to tell you who you are. You are a shield around me. Amen. They may be after me. My son may be trying to kill me. Amen. They may be trying to take the kingdom from me. But I'm going to trust you. Amen. Everybody say trust. Yes. Amen. I'm going I'm to trust in you. Why is that? Because you are the glory and the one who lifts my head. I've often said when your head is down, you're defeated. Get your head up. Walk with your head up. Remind yourself whose child you are. Amen. That you got a king behind you. Amen. You got God who loves you. You got a wave walker that's working miracles in your life. Get out there and walk with him. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. He's the glory and the lifter of my head. That's who you are. I'm in a bad place. It looks, but you lift my head. I call to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. That's worship. I call to you and I worship. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. That's trust. Yeah. Amen. I'm laying down, but I'm believing God that I'll have a next day. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. That's victory. Can I tell you what happened to Absalom? The battle ensued. Absalom took off. Did you know what David said? I don't care how wicked that boy's been. I know he's trying to usurp the kingdom. I know he's trying to take my place. Do him no harm. He's still my boy. How many of you feel that way about your kids? I just feel that way about my kids. I just love them. They nod heads. They messed up at times. But I love them. I'm not telling you they are right now. But I'm going to tell you, give them a few years, they will be. And so are yours. I love watching y'all grow your little kids up. Because I'm just thinking to myself, it's coming. <laughs> Amen. Life's going to hit. Amen. And I pray it don't. I pray this all stays sweet and kind and wonderful. But the bottom line in life, shy, is that there are times. Oh, Jesus. Amen. You wonder why some of the animal kingdom eat their young. <laughs> amen. amen. Thank God we're humans. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. So he, he, here this moment takes place. and The scripture says that. And, and uh, it's, it, you'll find it in, in Samuel and the Chronicles and the Kings. But the boy Absalom goes out on a donkey and he's, he runs up under a, a tree and his hair catches in the tree. And he's hung by his hair, his beautiful hair. And Joab, one of David's mighty men, his commander in chief, took darts and threw it into his heart. And then when the word came back and David asked, how's my son? He lamented, he cried, he wept because in rebellion, his son was killed. Amen. 
And then David took the kingdom back again. So sometimes be careful when you pray. Amen. Because in this prayer, he says that arise, Lord, deliver me, strike all my enemies on the jaw. Hallelujah. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. You know, worship brings us peace and victory. I got to start closing here. But as I'm moving, worship holds my head up. Let's go back to where we were. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 14. And when, verse 32. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This happens in our life when we find out that worship, worship is not about filling God's unmet ego. Before I got born again, my question was always, why y'all worshiping God? Why, why do people worship? It has nothing to do with his ego. God has made us so that when we experience something great, we have a need to praise it. When we meet some, when we see a Grand Canyon, when we see the Northern Lights, when, when, when uh, something has been good in our life, we have a tendency to worship. This is where idolatry can come in if you're not careful. It's okay to appreciate creation, but don't forget about our worship is for the Creator. Amen. So it, something happens. It's, uh, our experience is incomplete until we wrap words around it. We just got to say something about it. I watch on social media. Some people will post something and say, isn't that a beautiful sunrise, sunset, this, that, and the other. Somebody posted a morning picture. Amen. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it was a beautiful red sky. And the only thing I thought of when I looked at that picture was, it's going to rain tomorrow. Because yeah. <laughs> Red at night, sailor's delight, but red in the morning, sailor's warning. Amen. As soon as I saw that, I thought, that might look pretty to you, but it's telling me my deer hunt tomorrow is going to be a mess. That's right. Why God is to be worshipped. Something demands it in us. There's a God-shaped void in us. Amen. That it can only be filled by us telling him how much we love him. How much we love him. We're to worship God, not because, again, his ego, but because without worship, our experience and enjoyment of God are not complete. It's a need we have. We have, we need to worship. Without it, if we can, without it, we can forget that we have a big God beside us right. and we'll live in fear. Without it, we can forget his calling and begin to live in a spirit of self-preoccupation. Start doing our own thing without worship. Worship brings me back. Worship brings me back to 40 years ago when I got born again. Worship brings me back to why I'm here. Amen. We have to worship because without it, we lose a sense of wonder and gratitude. And we plod through life with blinders on. We need to worship because my natural tendency is towards self-reliance and stubborn independence. I walk on this water without you. I've tried. I need him. I need him. Worship brings revelation. I've often said revelation is that when that light bulb goes off inside your head. Amen. They're on the boat. They look out. You can't. I'm sure James nudged John and said, you see what I see? Thomas said, I don't believe it. I can't believe it. Look at that. And all of a sudden, they hear the words, Lord, save me. Jesus reached down his hand and he pulled Peter up. And now two men. The devil thought one man walking on the water was bad. Now look out. You got two men walking on the water. I don't know what Peter was saying, but I got a feeling it was, look at me, Jesus. Look at me. Look at me. Let me keep my eyes on you. He's walking back. And they head back into the boat. And as soon as they get in the boat, the winds die down. No more waves. It's calm. And then revelation hits. And they said, truly, you are the son of... See, that was the whole question. Who was Jesus? Jesus even asked him, ask who do you say? Who do they say that I am? Peter said, well, some say Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist. You know, some say, well, no, no, who do you say I am? And it was Peter that said in John, uh, I think it's John 10, 10. He said, uh, not such John 10, 10, 10. I don't know where it's at. It's in the Bible. <laughs> Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Here they got the revelation again. Truly you are the Son of God. You are the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Without the Word, nothing was made that had been made. My prayer this morning is that your faith 
has been built by the preaching of the word of God and that you'll stand on the word amen the word when the winds hit let me tell you when the winds are coming tomorrow yeah and the next day come on and the next day there's always going to be opportunity and don't condemn or beat yourself up and say when pastor I, I sank I sank into my Lord save me is your answer start over again pray again believe God for the best amen walk with him back to the boat get revelation and understanding hallelujah would you stand with me how many ways can you preach one passage Ooh, I don't even know if I've done with this and yet I spent over two months on this passage once but I never got to this the wind of the word. The wind of the word. I am personally in need of standing on the word today. I have a personal needs in my life to stand on the word. To believe this thought that Bishop Miller taught me years ago, God's prepared us for what he has prepared for us. That everything going on in life is preparing us for what's next your eyes closed for just a moment just kind of close yourself in with God I want you to see his hand reaching for you on whatever waters you're walking on sometimes we walk on waters to help others and sometimes it's of our own doing but either way we're walking and there's that sinking moment that sinking feeling that we've all gone through now I just want you to say this out loud Lord save me, Lord, save me. would you say it again Lord, save me. I just want you to say, and whatever the word save means to you right now. Lord, is it my salvation? Forgive me of my sins. Is it rescuing me out of this situation? Rescue me from my enemies. Amen. Lord, whatever it is, is it my esteem right now that I feel inadequate to serve God? Lord, you are the glory and the lifter of my head. You hold my head up. You've moved me through this situation. You give me the ability to keep on going. Though I seem to be hiding from my enemy, you'll bring me back stronger than I ever was. God, I thank you. I'm an overcomer. God, and right now my mind is stayed on you. And if I do that, Lord, the law of exposure tells me that as long as my mind is on you, I can walk with you. God, I thank you for the word and the testing of the wind. I believe we're going to pass this test in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give God a big praise in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise in here. You might say, well, Pastor, I, you said, Lord, I said, Lord, save me. Do you think he did it? Do you know what excites him? When you believe. That's right. Amen. When you just simply believe. I just believe. I believe God. Amen. 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 High five three people before you sit down. Would you do that? Amen. Just high five three.